right. It's 10 minutes before 2, so I suggest we get started. If you came here to see Karl Heinz Mabes talk about um, the road to Maven 4, I have to disappoint you. I'm not Karl Heinz, my German is terrible. Uh, I will not uh, try to uh, convey you of that. It's just a fact, it's terrible. Um, but unfortunately, he had to call in sick, uh, so I'm basically his replacement. You'll have to stick with me for the next 50 minutes, but I hope it will be a pleasant 50 minutes. So who am I? My name is Maarten Mulders. Just like Karl Heinz, I work on Apache Maven. Um, a little bit more about me, there's a bunch of little icons down there. I'm a Java champion, I'm an uh, Oracle Ace Pro, and I work at InfoSupport. If you would Google the name InfoSupport, we're a consultancy company. And you might think, a consultancy company? Why are you working on Maven? Right? Because that's typically not what your clients will pay you for. Correct, they do not. But what we see is that we use a lot of open source projects and, and tools in our day-to-day -day work. And in the true spirit of open source, we decided that we want to contribute back to these open source communities. And we do that by uh, providing time. Uh, so I, for instance, work on Apache Maven and sometimes simply donating money. But enough about me, enough about info support, because we're here to discuss what's cooking in Maven. I hope you have a little bit of room left after your lunch, uh, because as the title suggests, it's all about food. The people that know me a bit know that I love food, so I decided to go with the food theme. And today's menu, but let's assume it's almost dinner time, is a traditional four-course uh, uh, menu. Um, our entree, or starters, is the Maven wrapper. Our main uh, course, or plat principal, is the built consumer palm decoupling. And if that sounds like magic, it is not. We'll see when we get there. Then, just before dessert, we have uh, a little bit of cheese or fromage, where we will discuss the improvement in the, in the Maven reactor, and we will wrap up with a uh, Maven uh, with a short demo of the Maven Demon. Now, between the courses, if you have any questions, please raise your hands, and I'll try to uh, answer your question uh, at the at the point. Um, if there's not enough time left, then I'll just say I'm sorry, we'll have to postpone that one. And if time permits, we'll ha also have a little bit of uh, room for questions at the end. If you have a good question or a question that I just happen to like, I do have stroopwafels, which is a traditional Dutch cookie, and you'll earn one by having a nice or interesting or thought-provoking question. Um, um, grants about Gradle are not considered Stroopwafel worthy, I'm just saying, right? All right, everybody's good? Yeah. Excellent, let's go. As I said, our first course for today is uh, the starters or the entree, and we will be discussing Maven Wrapper. Who of you is familiar with Maven Wrapper already? And with Maven Wrapper, I think most of you will say, oh yeah, that's the Tikari thing. You see quite a lot of hands, that's great. Well, what I'm here to tell you today is that the Tikari Wrapper is in a certain way dead um, because it will make its way to the Apache Maven project. So for those who do not know the Maven Wrapper, it's a utility that helps you ensure everybody who is building your project will have the correct version of Maven, even if they do not have Maven installed. There is, of course, the Maven Enforcer plugin, where you can write in your POM, I want my build only to succeed if the user has at least Maven version, let's say, 3.5.0. But that assumes the user already has Maven installed. What if they do not? What if they really have a clean machine with nothing installed but Java? Well, that's where the Maven wrapper uh, can be of help, because it's a, a small shell script that uh, downloads the correct version of Maven for you and uses that version of Maven to build the project and do whatever you want to do on your project. The Maven wrapper runs on every major operating system and Windows, so that's a good thing. I mean, Linux, Mac OS, Solaris, that's what we expect to work after all, but it even runs on Windows. And rumor has it there may be, in the future, 
a PowerShell variant of the wrapper as well, but as far as I know, it's not there yet. Um, if you are familiar with PowerShell, um, it might be a great way to contribute, by the way. Um, and as I said, it's a great way for you as a project maintainer to actually um, basically forget about uh, instructions in your readme.md like, oh, PS, this project requires at least Maven 3.5.3 or this project requires at least Maven 3.8.3, which is the latest, uh, 3.8.6, I'm sorry, which is the latest as of today. So um, let's get cooking because I want to show you for each of our courses how it actually works. Um, let me see, I have a terminal here. For the people in the back, could you please let me know? It's the font size, five, so wow. Is the font size large enough? I see it people raising hands and I guess I see a lot of thumbs as well. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't check that up front. I'll, usually I do that. All right. Let's see. Um, what we used to be doing back in the days, uh, Maven wrapper, we used to generate a wrapper using this command. Where's my pointer? There it is. IO Takari Maven 077 column wrapper capital D Maven is 386. Now that's a, a, a convenient way to remember, right? It's short, it's concise. No, not? No, not really. Well, uh, anyway, it's a one time thing, so it doesn't really matter, right? And what it, uh, what it will do, it will generate a Maven W CMD and a um, Maven W shell script and a .mvn folder. Now let's get rid of these all together. Maven and Maven W and Maven W. And now let's generate the Apache wrapper, which is more or less the same thing. Although the command is a little bit shorter because now we can just say wrapper colon wrapper dash capital D maven equals 386. So this generates the wrapper and it is uh, saying that we want to use maven 386 to build this project. It generates the same type of files. That should be of no surprise. And to demonstrate that it actually works, I'm going to spin up a clean environment here, which is a Docker container. And just to prove you, we do have Java installed. This is Java 17, uh, uh, OpenJ9 version. And just to prove, we do not have Maven installed here. You see, Maven command not found. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to validate my project or, well, yeah, well, validate is fine. Hmm, nice story, isn't it? Unknown host exception repo.maven.org. Am I connected? I am, I, no, I'm not. That might be the culprit. Let's try again. Better, no. Just gonna do it again. No Maven. MVNW, validate. Please, please, pretty please. Pretty please. Yeah, great success. Whew. Did you try turning it off and on again? Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a sad thing, right? I'm gonna show you how awesome it is. Oh wait, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, but what did it actually do? Let's inspect our uh, .m2 folder. This, uh, you may be familiar with the .m2 repository folder, which contains all your downloaded dependency plugins, uh, plugin dependencies and whatnot. We're not diving into that one because now there's also a tilde m2 wrapper folder and the wrapper folder has a disk folder, has a Maven, uh, Apache Maven 386 bin folder, and that's where we will find one more random stringy thing. There we have it, a clean Maven installation in our .m2 folder. By the way, this random stringy thingy, um, 
it's basically there because some of the code was um, <clears throat> professionally inspired by the Gradle wrapper, which also has it. We do not only copy from Stack Overflow, after all. Um, so, um, as, as I said, um, it, it, it downloads Maven for you. It, apparently, it was already downloaded. So, just to be sure, let's remove that wrapper folder. Let's do Maven validate again. And we should see that it again will download. It takes a little bit longer because it's going to do my initial download. And then, well, we probably need to remove this part. Oh, it's even the same random generated string. Well, there we have it again. And now we can say maven w package, and I can build my project just fine. And it's going to download the whole internet because my project, even though it's a hello world thingy, of course, downloads the whole internet. That's what maven and npm have in common after all. But as you see, my clean environment did not have Maven installed by default. Apparently, it was provisioned by whatever, um, no Maven. But I can still build my project without having to worry about which version of Maven did I need again, because it's all there. Any questions so far? Yeah. Sir? Can you still, so this uses a local uh, .m2 directory. Yes. Question is, can you also use a shared Maven uh, folder on your local machine? I am not 100% sure about that. Um, I guess you can, but it's worth checking out. Uh, I personally only use uh, tilde M2. Uh, so that's, that's what I know that it, it works, and that's where I know it downloads it. But maybe if you share your machine with other people uh, and have a shared or uh, a shared uh, Maven 2 repository folder, you can maybe also have a, ma a shared Maven wrapper folder. That, that's not what I meant. Oh. So if, if I'm not mistaken, this puts the M2 folder in the project directory, right? No, no, no. Ah, there we go. This uses your tilde M2 folder. So okay. under your home directory. Yeah, all right, good. One more question, please. Because, uh, yes, please. Yes? Yeah. Good question. Does it does it work in a similar way? That's basically what you're saying. It doesn't work similarly like the Tikari wrapper. And we can just see what's inside the Maven, uh, .mvn folder. There's a wrapper. And there we find maven-wrapper properties and maven-wrapper jar. I guess that answers your question, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. Right, thank you. All right, um, so far for our entry course. It's time to move to the main course, which is the build slash consumer POM or as it should actually read, but the screen is not big enough, and that says a lot in a cinema like this, the build slash consumer POM decoupling. This, by the way, was uh, a topic that Karl Heinz is, uh, was also planning to discuss, and probably in more depth than I will do today. So if, if you came to hear that, then this is at least one moment to, uh, to pay a lot of attention. So the build consumer POM decoupling. What does it do? It decouples the pom.xml that you have in version control from the pom.xml that is deployed to your repository either locally or remotely. That's the one sentence summary, and there's a lot of stuff going on in that sentence. What we see nowadays is that if you write a pom.xml or if you're brave enough to use polyglot maven and you have pom.yaml, <laughs> or whatnot, um, that basically the same XML file, because I guess 99.99% .99 of people just write pom.xml, literally gets copied over into your uh, tilde m2 
a folder when you Maven install a project or when you Maven deploy a project gets uploaded to your, uh, your company repository or even to Maven Central. It's the same file with a few exceptions to that rule, by the way, because if you use the Maven Flatten plugin, it's not exactly the same file, but let's just for sake of simplicity say it's the same file. And this gives us a lot of interesting uh, challenges. One of the frequently asked questions, for instance, is why can't we make a dependency declaration in the POM XML a bit more concise? Or um, why can't we add this or that act element to XML? I mean, it's XML, it's, it, it, if we add an element that would be um, safe in terms of backwards compatibility, right? Um, so, so, so what's the problem? What's withholding you? Well, it's exactly this thing. The thing that those two files are literally the same files. And even though uh, Maven was never proclaimed to be a standard, I guess we can safely say, and, and uh, evident, uh, re research uh, supports that claim, that it is de facto a sta the standard build tool for the Java uh, and JVM ecosystem. There's numbers that suggest that roughly 75% of the Java users uses Maven. And also a lot of tools depend on the POM XML. Now imagine that we would add a few elements or even worse, remove some elements from POM XML, let's say in Maven 4, and we would still have this situation where we upload the same file from disk to, let's say, Maven Central. And then somebody else uses Maven 2 because, believe it or not, there's still people using Maven 2, or people use um, a Gradle or SBT, and they all rely on the POM XML being there and adhering to a certain standard. And those tools get a POM.XML from Maven Central, and some elements are gone, or there are elements that are not in the schema for the POM XML it would basically break the ecosystem if we would do that. So the, the, build consumer POM, the build consumer POM decoupling basically decouples, unlinks these two editions of the POM file. And it says what you have in your project, what you check into Git, what you have on disk, does not necessarily have to be the same thing as what you upload. In fact, when we read your project in uh, Maven 4, we can do transformations on the build POM, the one that's sitting on your disk, to transform it into the consumer POM that gets uploaded to Central or to your company repository. To make sure that if, if something changed in your project POM, in your build POM, we still have a valid POM that we upload to this Central or company repository. And as you can imagine, this is actually a cornerstone, a fundamental that allows us to further evaluate the POM the, and the schema for the POM from what we know today into where we want to go. If we wouldn't do this, then there would unavoidably be points in time where we say, sorry, whole Java ecosystem, sorry, whole Java community, you just have to update your tools because we, the Maven community, decided that POM.xml needs a little update here and there. I don't think that's the best way to make friends nowadays. So this allows us to evaluate, to change the schema without breaking the ecosystem. Let's see how that looks in practice. And for that, again, we need to move to the kitchen. And we go to the second demo, which is build consumer POM. And I'm going to show you just a small example of what we can do with Maven 4 already, which is not possible with Maven 3, which is, as you, well, just judge for yourself. We'll see afterwards. So I have a very small project here. And um, just to be sure, I have Maven 3 which is, as you would expect probably, an installation of Maven 3.8.6, but
But I also have Maven 4, which is a snapshot of what Maven 4 is going to be. This is literally the last green build from Jenkins. Um, and I'm going to show you a few things with Maven 3 that break and that will work with Maven 4. So, Maven 3 package. Uh, we have a very simple project with, uh, and I'll just open it in um, VS Code. Is this also uh, okay in terms of font size, people in the back? Yes, a lot of fonts, excellent. Um, so what we have here is um, our pom.xml um, for the build consumer pom. Yes, gotcha. Um, it's nothing too exciting. It's a parent pom with just one child module. Typically, you will have many more, but this is just to highlight the idea. And the child project, well, this is something that you probably have seen quite a lot of times. It needs a parent declaration, and the parent declaration points to a group ID, artifact ID, and a version. And my uh, child module can also have a version. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, I can still remove. Yes because my child project will inherit the version from the parent. But as soon as I remove this, the version number of the parent, Maven 3 will say, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What's your parent exactly? Which is a bit strange, because what we did not see here is that there's also a relative path element that you may have seen in the past, and its default value is pom.xml. So one could argue, Maven, you can figure that out for yourself, right? It's just the parent, it's just living up one directory. That's what we do 99.99% of the times. And even if that would change, well, okay, then we can do dot dot slash dot dot. But why can't you make this up to yourself? Well, the good part is Maven 4 can actually do that. Now I'm running Maven 4, the project is uh, building just fine, as we would actually have hoped for, but now it actually works that way. So I have removed a few elements from my child project here. The versions, both of the versions are gone. But now what I can do, I can install it to my local repository. And we will see by just opening that file in an even better editor than we had before. Um, I'm taking the wrong file. I needed to have that one. VI is your friend here. What we can see here is that the parent reference now has version 1.0 snapshot. So what Maven 4 did here, it took the build pom it enriched the build pom with stuff it could deduce for itself in this, in this case, and wrote that one to the local repository. Or if I would have said Maven deploy, it would have uploaded to uh, my company repository or to Maven central. So that's, th this is really a small example, but it shows the power of what we can do. Another thing what we are thinking of, and maybe it's already finished, but please don't, uh, don't shoot me if, if, if I turn out to be wrong here, is that we uh, are thinking about resolving uh, pro uh, inter-project dependencies, so a dependency to another module in the same project. Well, you don't have to give the version number because it lives in the same project, right? Why do I still write version and then uh, dollar curly brace project dot version curly brace? I can deduce for myself, right? So. The POM XML that I just wrote to the rep local repository is different from the build POM. Consumer POM, build POM are now decoupled. Any questions on this one? Yes, please. If you can remove the version of the parent, why not as well the group ID and the artifact ID? Um, that's an interesting one. Strobe waffle uh, earned, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> what's that? Please create a GI issue. Yeah. Very good idea. Very good idea. Yeah. 
So that that's basically two bonus things for you. One is the strobe waffle. Second is that, that's such a good idea that that both me and Hervé, which happens to just join the room and is also a Maven committer, say. Yeah, uh, perfect. <laughs> I love your feeling for timing, Heve. Uh, <laughs> it's a brilliant idea, actually. Uh, we just didn't think of that ourselves. So please, um, if you feel comfortable, uh, raise an, uh, a Jira issue for that, because I think we should at least consider if that's possible. Uh, and if you don't feel comfortable, then, then find either Heve or me, and we will help you uh, write it down. Perfect. And don't don't forget to, to go get a stroke of same applies for the two of you, by the way. Those were excellent questions. I for forgot to mention that, that if you want to, you can have one. Any other question on this topic before we move on to the fromage? Yes, please. Oh, yes, I'm, so I'm terribly sorry. The question was, it's nice that you can remove the version over here, but why not everything? Why not also the group ID and the artifact ID? And at that very moment, uh, another Maven committer, Hervé, stepped into the room and said, perfect idea, raise, an, uh, raise a gyra issue for that. Uh, thank you for reminding of that, by the way, because I typically do that, but I forgot this time. I was so flabbergasted. Anyway, we discussed the build consumer palm decoupling. And now it's time for a little in between, or as the French uh, tend to say, le fromage, which goes after the main course and just before dessert. And uh, this time I want to show you the improvements that we did in Maven 4 in the reactor. Now, Maven 3 introduced the idea of multi module builds. And I think if I say it like this, the most people will be like, how is that new? It's been there for ages. It has been. It's already quite a while in Maven. It was introduced in Maven 3, and there were a few remaining issues, a, a few um, rough edges. Yeah, we need to figure that, that, that out someday. It would be nice if we could improve, but it's not, the, the, it's not so important that it should block uh, releasing Maven 3. So, we finally got to address those in Maven 4. For those who are not uh, too familiar with, with Maven internals, and, and that's probably most of you um, I'm guessing here, by the way, the reactor is the part of Maven that actually um, decides or, or builds the, the mental model of, of what is the project that I am currently working on, which modules are there, um, what are the dependencies between the modules, and as a consequence, in what order should I build the modules. Because if one module is dependent on another module, I need to build them in the right order, right? And this reactor um, lacked basically one major thing from a design perspective. Um, depending on how you would invoke Maven, it would not recognize that it was working on a multi-module project. And this is why many people, especially those working on large multi-module builds, uh, a project, still have the habit of doing Maven install followed by Maven test. Uh, because what was the case, if you would do, for instance, Maven test on a child module, it would resolve your dependencies to other modules not from the same project directory as you would expect it to do. It would basically look into your local tilde M2 repository folder. And I see a few people here in, in the front nodding like, oh yeah, I, I remember this, I remember this, yeah. Well, that's basically, uh, we, 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 well, yeah, we can say it's solved. We solved this. So that means that if you now run Maven, on either the whole project or a part of the project, it will always know, hey, I'm part of a larger thing, which is the root project. And maybe I should consider that fact and then decide which modules are there and in what order am I going to build there. There's a little caveat, um, and that's why I used a small font. Uh, you need to have a .mvn folder in the root of your project. Otherwise, there's no reliable way for Maven to determine 
well, how long should I continue moving up the folder structure yeah, eventually to slash? That's probably not the root of my project. Or to C colon backslash for those who are unlucky enough to run on Windows. Um, that's probably also not the root of your project. So where is it? Well, we mark it with a .mvn folder. By the way, there's a great pa page with documentation on the Maven project website because that folder serves a few more purposes. You can add configuration files for standard JVM arguments or even standard Maven arguments that you want to uh, apply to every invocation of Maven regardless of what the user types. But that's a different story. And what this basically means for you as an end user of Maven, especially if you use Maven multi-module project, by the way, how many people actually do use multi-module project? Just, just okay, maybe it's easier to ask who does not, because that's probably easier to count. Thank you. Quite a lot of people do. That supports my feeling uh, on this topic. Um, it means that if you are uh, going to use Maven 4, you don't have to do this Maven install, Maven test. You can just do Maven test, and you can even do Maven test on a sub-module because it will work nevertheless. Rather than, oh, I forgot to do Maven install, and that's why it's not picking up my new dependency. Let's see that in practice. Again, I have um, improved reactor. I have Maven 3 here and I'm going to test my multi-module build. And um, as we are doing TDD, I have a test, um, but my test is failing, so I am supposed to fix my test. That's the rule of the game, right? And luckily Maven is friendly enough to tell me if you did that, here's how you can resume your build. You can resume from, that's dash RF, dash RF, colon coffee shop impl, that's the module that's currently failing. And you just need to supply uh, the arguments as you did before. So, okay, Maven free, test. Just go to check if this actually works, right? Because it would be a shame if it didn't work. Build still fails, but as you might see, for a different reason. Because, and I hope the contrast between gray and red is a bit good, could not resolve dependencies for projects. Coffee shop Impo could not find artifact coffee shop API. So it fails, but for a different reason. It cannot resolve a dependency to another module inside the same folder, inside the same project structure. That's what I said when I meant it's not root project aware. It simply doesn't seem to know when I do dash R dash RF that the project coffee shop impl is part of a bigger whole, which also contains the, the coffee shop API. So even if I would fix my test here and, 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 and would say, okay, well, fine, return me a new ground coffee, then still this is not going to work because it cannot resolve the dependency. Okay, changing it back to null for a second. Now I'm going to do the same exercise with Maven 4. I'm going to say Maven 4 test, runs my test. No surprise, test fails again, because expecting actual to be null, that's, that's the whole TDD uh, thing here. Now it says Maven arguments dash R. That's interesting, not dash RF, but dash R. So I'm going to say Maven test dash R. And at least, Let's see, yes, so still it's the test failing. It's not dependency resolution failing, it's the test failing. So that's one thing we see here. It manages to recognize that, hey, I have a dependency on Coffee Shop API, but Coffee Shop API is part of the same multi-module build, so I can resolve it over there. The second thing that I briefly pointed at is the fact that Maven not, no longer says dash RF coffee shop impl, but it just says dash r, which is another case of why can't you figure that out? Yeah. Right? I mean, dash rf, and then I have to yeah. pass the name of the module that failed, but you know which module failed because it just failed, right? We basically created a resume properties file here in the failing invocation of Maven that says the projects that still 
are left to build our coffee shop input and coffee shop app. And that allows us to say, let's make it a little bit easier for our end user and let's give them the suggestion to just dash R, resume the build. Just the same thing as I did before, just continue, just finish it off already. Again, speaking of uh, finishing off, uh, let's finally fix that test because it was too easy. Why didn't we do it in the first place? Let's do one more test dash R. And now my test is green, my build is green, and I'm a happy developer again. And I can, it's TDD refactor again, correctly. Not add a new test and, and start de uh, continue developing first refactor. Let's skip, let's skip that for now. So what we see here is that um, the Maven detected, again, from the fact that we have a .mvn folder here, hey, part of a bigger whole, part of a multi-module build. So let's take the whole project into consideration before diving in, building this particular sub-module and um, uh, failing because the test actually fails. There's a whole lot more to tell about this because it's not only about dash RF, resume from versus dash R, resume. This also applies, for instance, to uh, uh, the PL switch for project list, for those who, of you who are familiar with it. Um, coffee shop impol. I'm just going to run quickly through these. Uh, oh yeah, of course, uh, validate. So I, oh, well, that even works. I didn't expect that to work. Yes, I know why it works. If I do package, it does not work. Great. Uh, so it applies to the project list switch, which now also considers the whole project. It applies to the dash F switch, if I'm not mistaken, which allows you to select a directory and say, build the project inside that directory. Maven 4 correctly figures out it's part of the bigger project. It still works. Uh, and uh, a few more or less related things that we fixed there is that we also uh, made a few tweaks to how the uh, profile activation works so that it works more the same as, it, as, as project selection work. PL is for select which projects to build and there's also dash capital P for which profiles to activate or to deactivate. And we, we changed that a little bit so it works more or less the same as project selection. And it now also offers you the opportunity to say, activate a profile if it exists. And if it does not exist, don't care. So, and same for deactivate a profile if it exists. And if it does not exist, it's not a problem. Whereas previously, uh, you could not deactivate a profile that did not exist. And, you know, you sometimes have these large enterprises that say, oh, yes, but every project needs to adhere to a standard and we all need to have an integration test profile, for instance, or a performance test profile. Then if your project did not have that profile, then you still needed to audit because otherwise the uh, corporate managed build would fail because your, your project did not have a profile that it didn't need anyway. So we can get rid of that as well. Any questions on this part? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yeah, there's, there's two of you, and you're sitting. For, uh, please, uh, you you first. Yes. Will the project also build um, uh, depending modules? That's your question. If you did not build them before, and the answer is not by default, but if you supply dash am for also make, it will. And there was another question. Uh, why doesn't it show its current arguments? Why doesn't it? Why does Maven not show the current arguments when you suggest dash r? Um, I know we considered that. But it turned out to be pretty hard to implement, I, if I recall correctly. Um, 
there's the command line supplied arguments, but inside that MVN folder you can also have, well, basically stuff that influences the command line, be it arguments, be it switches, be it whatnot. And it turned out pretty hard to reconstruct the whole command line. Uh, and we said, well, let's do it one step at a time. This is the easy part. This we know how to fix is already going to be quite an improvement because you don't have this call on coffee, shop dash, import, etc. All right, we have 11 minutes left, but we still need to ha have our desserts. Oh, yeah, we did that. So let's move to the Maven daemon um, for now. So what is the Maven daemon? In a nutshell, it's a way to provide you with a faster Maven build using a daemon process. And um, earlier I said, uh, well, it was in, uh, about the Maven wrapper that it was partially inspired by the Gradle wrapper. Well, this conceptually is inspired by the Gradle daemon, of course. And it, I don't know that much about the Gradle daemon, but I, I figure it, it works more or less the same way. The idea is that Maven daemon actually keeps your JVM warm and it keeps your plugins warm. Warm in the sense that once loaded, we're not getting rid of the JVM, we're not getting rid of all the loaded plugin definitions, but we keep them in memory, we keep them available for the next invocation of Maven to happen, which is typically just a few minutes later. And it would be quite of a shame, even though that's what we do nowadays, to spin up a whole new JVM, load all those plugins and, 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 and the whole project structure again, and we're doing it every single time again. Now, the, the Maven daemon keeps it, keeps it hot, and as soon as you run a, a, a Maven build again, it, it reuses what it already knew. And what it also does, and that's quite a nice improvement, is that it by default runs your build in a multi-threaded way. But then without cluttering the output of your build. And that's uh, if, if you happen to have used uh, Maven dash capital T, um, for instance, dash capital T2 or 4, it runs your Maven build on, mul uh, on multiple threads, but it, all those threads will spam your standard out with logging information. And you can basically not make sense of it anymore because they all do it at the same time. They just throw shit at your console and you're like, okay, I'll just wait for it to finish. <laughs> and then hopefully it's green. Uh, what Maven Demon does in uh, contrast is it will uh, basically um, keep the output for itself until the whole build is done and then once write it all to the terminal, but then in a structured way. I, I see some. Uh, thank, well, you can clap, but I did not make this. In fact, the person, <laughs> the, there's a few persons that did a lot of work, and I know one of them is at uh, at DevOx uh, this year. It's, it's Peter. I'm not sure if Peter is in the room, but he deserves the applause. He is. You deserve the applause, <laughs> not me. <laughs> at least more than I do. Uh, I'm just here to tell the news. Uh, that, that's basically it. And probably Peter is, is like, well, there's a lot more to say about this. Um. Please forgive me, Peter. Um, so what does that look like in practice? Um, where do I have it? Maven Demon. Well, I have a demo project for this, but we well, we do have a little bit of slack. We can also run it on uh, the Maven code base itself. How would you feel about that? R rather than the demo project, which is a bit boring, right? OK, um, speed up, gear up. Uh, Maven free, uh, or, or just Maven, package. Um, this is a regular build of Maven, building Maven. Uh, Maven itself consists, uh, it, the core of it, of, uh, what is it again, 30 modules, and we're now building them sequentially. And we're testing them, and it takes quite a bit of time. Maybe it would have been more fun, actually, to do it dash capital uh, five, because then we also see the cluttered output, la 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 la. Good luck making sense of what went wrong at which moment in which module right now. Okay, it goes a bit faster. That's that's the good news. But if, if it would fail, you would you would definitely not be in luck because what failed, why, and where? Uh, 
And this is why I wanted to have the power plug for my Mac, because if you do this on the battery, it runs even longer. How far are we? No idea, because you basically can't tell, right? Ah, 30 out of 30, that's the, the final module. That means we're finally there, finally there, finally there. And it took us one minute and one second. All right. Now I'm gonna do it with Maven Daemon, compile, uh, also package. Should be roughly one minute still because, wait, double check, status. I have one daemon which is still hot, so maybe it will go quicker actually. Maven D package. Let's see what happens. First of all, no more cluttered output, as I promised you. Also, a nice and clear indication of how far are we. We are at module 25, 26 already. 86% of the build has passed and we are in 15 seconds. Previous was one minute and one second. Let's remember that one. Module 26 still. I have to say, by the way, multi Multi-threaded builds are great, but um, as soon as you have one module that is kind of an umbrella to all the other modules, that of course is acting like kind of a bottleneck, right? Because you can't run that in parallel with something else as, as they're all dependent on it. But still, 46 seconds. And then probably if I'm running it again, it might be even a bit quicker because the JVM was warm, but I think it was the same JVM that we are reusing right now. Yeah, it's probably gonna be roughly the same time. There's a whole lot more that the Maven Demon can do for you. And I'm going to run through that in the last couple of minutes. One, yes, one question, please. Um, uh, I tried uh, the Maven uh, Demon. I, I think it's the project you're using. It was the same name. <laughs> is, there, is there something else called Maven Demon? I know. Uh, but uh, I found those guys on Stack Overflow that told, tell you how what the compiler flags to use for a regular Maven run. And it actually turned out that those flags are faster than using Maven Demon. Do, do you have any insight into that? That's a question we should discuss uh, uh, outside. I don't, I, 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 I don't understand the question immediately, and given the, the time that we have left, um, it, it's a bit short to, to, to let you repeat and rephrase. I'm sorry for that. It's me not understanding you. Let's, 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 let's start with that. So this is what Maven Demon does in a nutshell, and you can still turn a lot of knobs and say, okay, I want to suppress the multi-module builds, for instance, but that, let, let's all discuss that at a later point. Because I want to quickly discuss the timelines of what we just saw today. We saw the Maven wrapper, and it is already available today. You can use it the same way as you use the Tikari wrapper. The build consumer problem, in terms of completeness, it's, it, we consider it done, um, but it will only make it into Maven 4. It will not be in Maven 3.9, if that is ever going to see the light, you will have to wait for Maven 4 in order to be able to use it. And some plugins, even some, um, some standard Maven plugins, will need to be updated or replaced. The plugin that you use, for instance, to sign your artifact does not work with the Build Consumer POM. We created a new Maven plugin for that that does work with the Build Consumer POM. The improved reactor, same applies there comes to you in Maven 4, no earlier. And then we have the Maven Demon, which already works uh, today. Uh, you can just install it using SDK Man or Homebrew or Chocolati. Um, and I used to say here, it is not yet available for Apple Silicon, uh, but that's not no longer the case. Um, uh, version 0.8.2 was released last Tuesday, literally, and it also has a native executable for Silicon. Uh, so that's great. It, it, it used to have the, the CLI, the MVND, not as a native executable, but as a Java program. This is now also a native executable. 
And um, it's important to know that it may break your build if you use a plugin that's not thread safe. That's for you as a Maven user to double check. We can't do that for you. So to summarize the Maven wrapper, ready for use, build consumer POM, Maven 4, improved reactor, Maven 4, Maven Demon, ready to use. And then finally, in the last minute, I have a question for you. And the question is this, please help us. Um, please help us by uh, testing these new features. And if you find a bug, please, by all means, report it. And it would be even better if you could report it with a small reproducer project. That's the best way you can help. These reproducer projects make it easy for us to see what's the actual problem, to debug it, to fix it, and to prevent it from happening again. Because we typically take these projects and just include them in our CI/CD pipeline so to prevent it from ever happening again. Oh, and by the way, obviously, if you did test and did create a reproduce, please report it in the uh, Maven issue, check, uh, issue tracker. And with that, Time's up, says the little monitor here. I would like to thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoyed what I uh, have showed you. If you want to play around, toy a little bit, the demo projects are on my GitHub. You can download them. Um, you can clone the repository. It has instructions on how you can play with it yourself. Also, how you could play with it on your own projects. Um, and if you would be so kind, please let me know what you think about this talk. The app has a, a great way to leave your feedback. I'd love to hear what you think about it and how you think the talk maybe could even improve further. Please enjoy the remainder of DevOx as much as you can. If you have any questions, I'll be taking them outside as the next speaker is probably very eager to take the stage from me. Thank you.